conference. We have a, just a few things that we'd like to share about what's going on at King Schools and what we've been doing um, in terms of dealing with this very difficult year that we've all had this last year. So the uh, press conference uh, topics, if we go to the next slide, we'll just take a quick walk through those. Uh, He's going to get my mic up. I want to introduce Barry Canutula. That's a, that's a Finnish name. He's American, but that's a Finnish name. Barry uh, started flying. As his father was a corporate pilot. Uh, Barry started flying as a teenager, uh, has been flying ever since. He, he uh, guides King Schools. Uh, okay. And uh, he's, he, uh, we respect and admire uh, Barry, very, very much. He's a very ethical, competent person, and it's one of the reasons that Martha and I are still eating regularly is uh, because Barry is CEO of King Schools. He's uh, also typed in our old Falcon 10, and uh, we trade legs uh, just cir cir circulating through the uh, two pilot seats. And Barry is in his 50s. We think he's a young... We think he's a young kid. Uh, well, I think so too, John. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Thanks and, for that. And, but he is a, a very, very ethical, competent person. Well, thank you for that introduction. I, I can tell you that one of, the, one of the best things, I'll give that a moment, one of the best things that's happened to me in life was landing at King Schools. And I, I literally mean landing at King Schools. Uh, I was an instrument rated private pilot about 18 years ago with a passion for aviation and a background in leading technology organizations. I was able to, I was able to apply that technology to King Schools and, and bring King Schools into the internet and into internet marketing and, and all the things that we're doing today. And it's been the most wonderful thing in my life. Along the way, I've had the wonderful opportunity to uh, have the mentorship of John and Martha in business, in life, in flying, and in so many other ways. So as you can imagine, uh, this has been a wonderful job that I'm now is going to be my last job. Uh, and I expect it to go on for a long time still to come. So I'm having fun with it. Uh, and that's, that's enough about me. I'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, King Schools and start out by, by saying, as with all of you, last year was a tough year for King Schools. And there's, there's a great old saying and, and it's actually a curse that's kind of wrapped in, a, in what you might think is, is good wishes. And that's, may you live in interesting times. Well, I can tell you that last year were certainly interesting times. Uh, they were interesting for us, and, and I know that they were interesting for you and, and horrific at times and, and very difficult for many people. At the beginning of the crisis, the COVID crisis, we really didn't know what was going to happen with general aviation. We had ideas that, that maybe it would do uh, well, but also that it was going to be impacted tremendously by a restriction in travel, the impact on the airlines, the pipeline for pilots. Uh, we had a lot of concerns and a lot of insecurity. As things turned out, um, general aviation is resilient. We have the type of people that don't give up easily. that don't give up easily on their goals. And we saw that throughout the year. In fact, we saw even a lift in, uh, during the last year in people completing what they'd started and using King products in order to reach their goals. So we were actually very, very pleasantly surprised, not only for King Schools, but for the aviation industry. So as it turns out, last year was a good year for general aviation training. Many people took the opportunity to achieve new ratings or at least achieve new levels of knowledge in aviation. So we saw increases across the board. And uh, one of the things that was difficult with, at King Schools was how do we take 50 people that are all working in the office and allow them to work from home where they could be safe and with their families and still not lose any productivity. Well, I can tell you that we were able to do that. We, we, within weeks of making the decision, 
we had all of our employees working from home. They had internet access. They had uh, access to our internal systems. They were able to continue their work. We routed our phones across the internet so that when you dialed the King School's phone number, it automatically went to uh, somebody who could take care of answering questions, whether they were technical support, customer service, uh, sales calls. Um, so we were able to very quickly adapt. And, and uh, I can tell you now that as a result of that, like many companies, many people, we're thinking about what the return to work looks like. And we know that in many ways, we actually increase productivity by people staying at home. And we, we don't want to lose that. Uh, so we're working on ideas about how to bring people back into the office. But the good thing is that in very short order, we had our video production studio up to speed and running uh, with brand new standard operating procedures that had everybody that would normally be in the studio, and we normally have six or eight people uh, in a small room when we're shooting video. We were able to distribute those people out to offices within the, the building and provide them with video feeds, provide them with an open intercom so they could talk back and forth, and we were able to get back to shooting video very quickly. So as we looked forward, uh, we're also now returning to doing in-flight video. And that's very exciting for us because over the last year, we've had the opportunity to think about how we do online or in the air video. And we have a whole new configuration of a brand new 172 with cameras, about five or six cameras, depending on the, on the configuration, different points in the airplane, different points in the cockpit. And we're going to be able to do much more, um, I, I would say, more instructive video by using many different camera angles to show and demonstrate concepts and ideas. And so we're, we're very excited to return to flying and uh, shooting video from the airplane. And we're going to start out with reshooting all of the flying videos, the preview videos that we have in our Cessna courses. And that's going to spill over into reshooting all of the flying video in the King courses as well. So, so that's been a big step for King Schools. And in some ways, that little breather that we had gave us the opportunity to rethink some things that are going to end up producing even better quality video. So we're looking forward to that when we look at uh, this year and, and onward. So just wanted to give you a little bit of background about the, the impact of uh, COVID on King Schools and where we're at now, which is very well positioned as we all come out of that and there's even more return to flying and as the airlines start hiring again and, and we're ramping up more and more programs to produce airline pilots, uh, King Schools is ready to take advantage of that. So the, the other topics that I have, then we're gonna go through these, I have slides for each one. We have a brand new marshalling uh, video course. Uh, we have the promotion of an employee that we'll talk about. And I'm really looking forward to introduce to you our 2021 scholarship winner for the NAFI King School Scholarship, and we'll talk about that. And then we'll look a little bit into the future and, and take your questions. So starting out with aircraft marshalling, so that's, that's our latest free video course. And we've been making a habit out of creating free video courses for the flying public on areas that we think really need to get out there. There's information that needs to get out um, they're small chunks. We've got about 13 of those courses so far. And the latest one is aircraft marshalling. Now, just can I interrupt you? go ahead, John. Of course I can. Huh? <laughs> uh, how many people in here have ever had formal instruction on what the hand signals for marshalling mean? Have you ever taken a course in it? A few have. All right, I hadn't. And so our idea is, to, and this is a free course, to make available a course in those hand signals uh, that many pilots don't get in their, in their career. So I'm sorry, that, that was my contribution. <laughs> Thanks, John. And, and, I, and that's true. I, I never had formal training on aircraft marshalling. And if you look through the various PTSs and ACSs for the, the ratings that somebody goes through, even becoming a professional pilot, I have not found anything on aircraft marshalling signals. So it's something that we looked at, and especially how, how many people were actually marshaled coming into uh, Lakeland or to the satellite airports coming out here? A couple people were. And, and I'm sure that a lot of the, the signals make sense. You, you look at them and you can kind of follow them. 
but many people don't necessarily have the security to know absolutely that's what that means. They, they may be able to follow the marshaller in, in typical situations and get parked, but we wanted to go a little bit deeper and, and show each of the signals how they work and uh, make sure that the pilots understood how they work. So here's the, here's the big problem, right? And, and it turns out right now I'm, I'm working on reshooting a lot of our fundamental of instruction course for uh, aspiring CFIs. And, and this is one thing that you learn when you're becoming a CFI, is that there's a process of transferring knowledge from one head to another head. And the effectiveness of that is measured by the closeness of the idea that was sent to the idea that was received. And they never match completely. Well, when it comes to aircraft marshalling, we don't want that uh, misunderstanding to lead to dangerous situations. So we have this marshaller here waving their hands frantically like this. And you know the, the receiver over here is thinking, what in the heck do they want me to do? Uh, fly like a bird, you know, flapping wings. But, uh, but there, there is actually a defined meaning for that signal, and that's just to move straight ahead. So what we want to do is make sure that all of those uh, marshaling signals are well understood by pilots who maybe haven't yet flown into a busy airport but are contemplating doing that, and they know I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to get marshaled there. Let me do a review of those marshaling signals. And uh, like I say, it's a free course. It's available to everybody. And uh, we're going to play just a, a little bit of the course so that you have an idea of what it's like. And this, this segment was done by uh, John. And we're talking about um, little used signals. You know, there are so many wonderful things you can do in aviation. In fact, the whole idea of aviation is to go places and do things. And that can sometimes expose you to new airports and new experiences where you see marshalling signals that you don't recognize, especially at an air show or a fly-in or even just arriving at a bigger or busier ramp than you're used to. That's because some marshalling signals are just not used very often, or they apply to both departing and arriving aircraft. So here are a few signals that don't fit into any one category. For example, sometimes on a large ramp, they will send a marsh. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to stop there at a cliffhanger and, and leave, leave you wanting to get the answer to that question. And uh, so go ahead, you can go to kingschools.com and uh, you'll find on the home page the opportunity to register for and take the aircraft marshalling course. So you'll, you'll learn the signals used by marshallers on busy ramps and you'll learn what they expect to see in response to those marshalling signals. So it's one of, like I say, it's one of 13 free courses that we offer. While you're there, take a look at the other 12 and see if there isn't something else that, that may be of use to you. We'd, we'd like to continue this path of creating free courses that are of service to aviation on spe specific topics that, that we want to make sure we get out there. Many of them are safety related. Okay, the next topic that I have is one that I'm very excited about. And that has to do with our professional course business. Now, a lot of you may be shaking your heads and saying, professional course business, this is King Schools. They don't do professional courses. Well, in fact, we do. And King Schools currently has over 21 professional pilot courses available on our website. And those are taken by corporate pilots, part 135 operators. Um, some small 121 operations use the courses as well. Um, those that don't have their own training departments. And we get those pilots over hurdles and we give them the, the uh, training that many of them have to have in their logbook in order to do certain operations as a professional pilot. Many of those having to do with international operations, inter international procedures. So what we've done is we've taken a look at that business and decided this is an area that we really want to put a lot of emphasis on in the future. And part of putting emphasis on it was promoting Kim Hansen, who's been with King Schools for quite some time, 
to the position of business leader of our professional pilot courses. And the idea is to take those courses and really run that set of courses as its own business within King Schools. And Kim is perfectly uh, equipped to do that. She's very sharp. She, has, um, she is a helicopter commercial pilot in CFI. She's a fixed wing pilot. And she's been with King Schools for and taking care of our FERC course for over five years. That's the flight instructor refresher course that flight instructors have to take every two years in, in order to renew their flight instructor certificates. It's a big chunk of work. And Kim is a detailed person. She's been in keeping track of that, working with the FAA to maintain the certification of that course. Because when somebody takes our course, when they finish, they're actually certified as a flight instructor for two additional years. So it's a lot of responsibility, and Kim has taken that on. She's done a fabulous job of running that business, and she's going to do a fabulous job of running our professional pilot business. In the past, we have not put as much emphasis on that part of the business as we should, as the uh, courses demand, the quality of the courses demand. So we're really looking forward to take that business and make sure that all of you, the next time I say, King Schools professional pilot course, it won't be a head scratcher. It'll be, oh yeah, King Schools does that as well. They, we take care of pilots from the first idea of learning to fly all the way through a potential career as a professional pilot. So Kim is fantastic. We're looking forward to it. We've got 21 uh, courses and we're continuing to grow and add more courses over time. So those are the 21 courses just so that you kind of have an idea of the type of courses that we are currently, uh, that we're curr currently providing to professional pilots. Okay, so with that said, and, and by the way, the, those of you from the press, there's press releases on all of this. John Dowd, who's sitting right over here, is our Vice President of Marketing, and he's the one that's really taking care of making sure that I say the right things and, and talk about the right things. So John, let me know if I'm not. But, uh, but John is here, he's gonna get the press releases out. If you did not get an invitation to this meeting and you do want to get our press releases, and that's not just the press, it's anybody who's here, see John, give him a business card, an, an email address, uh, whatever you need, and you'll get the actual uh, press releases that are ready to print. At this point, I'm very happy to turn the mic over to John and Martha in order to introduce and talk about the winner of the NAFI King School Scholarship. Well, I was just getting, uh, uh, I was just fixing to say that we have a very special opportunity here. We got Bob Mater, who's chairman of National Association of Flight Instructors. He's going to come up and make me look short. Which is very easy to do, and here's Martha. <laughs> now we'll both really look short. Uh, you know, National Association of Flight Instructors has been around for a long time, and National Association of Flight Instructors does something that is extremely important and extremely valuable, and it provides a sense of community for flight instructors in the United States. Um, and Bob is chairman of the National Association of Flight Instructors. And what happens as a result of the National Association of Flight Instructors is we have guidance, we have, as I said, community, and if you don't have a sense of community, people tend to go feral. Uh, and flight instructors go off this, that, this direction and that direction, and, and we don't follow uh, an organization. And, Bob provides that organization that keeps flight instructors from going feral, and, and, and as a result, provides um, uh, a sense of guidance and a sense of, uh, uh, of knowing what's important in flight instruction. Well, you're, you're way too kind, John, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned. The organization is what does that. The organization, Na National Association of Flight Instructors, is really proud that we help raise the bar in professionalism among flight instructors. We have more professional pi instructors, we help them be better instructors, we have better pilots, a better aviation community, not just in general aviation, but all the way up through the airlines and even into the test pilot community. So we're really proud of that. And it's, you've been way too kind giving me the credit. We have a lot of good people working for us. We've got Loretta Godby, we've got John Niehaus, they're the ones uh, David Hishman, our editor, they're the ones doing the real heavy lifting for the organization. Now, I think, 
for five years now. Um, NAFI and King Schools have, have my right on five years, yes, co collaborated on providing a scholarship for people who are or want to be flight instructors. That is and, correct. Sir. And so we have our new scholarship awardee, Alan, come on come up. Come on up. <laughs> come on up. This is Alan Reinder. And let me tell you the criteria for this scholarship. Um, we decided we wanted people uh, who were extraordinary people who were going to make a great contribution to the aviation community. We decided we want, wanted people. Hello, Victor. How are you doing? I'm well. You're good. I'm glad you're well. Because you were well the other night, you would have gone to, something would have happened really quickly if you were not well. <laughs> we wanted people who were going to make a contribution to the aviation community. We wanted people who had a, 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 a great story to tell, and we wanted the people that we were going to make a difference in their lives. And what else did we have as criteria that we would look for? Did you mention a great story? We d I did. And but responsibility and initiative? Oh, we and wanted them to be resp have responsibility and initiative. Right. And I think the, the other thing, John, is, is that we, we wanted people who would make a future contribution to aviation, in particular in flight instructing. That's, that's correct. So. We have that person. We get a, we get a, this is Alan Reinder. Am I pronouncing it right, Alan? Reinders, yep. Reinders. there's an S. There's an right. S on the end of Reinders. I'm a slow learner, I'll get there. Okay. Uh, so we get a list of candidates and very laboriously go through the list of candidates, but Alan made it easy because he bubbled to, the, to top the top of that list. And he, I, I'll tell you why he bubbled to the top of that list. Uh, Alan uh, had a, a, a beginning career in law enforcement and, and in other areas, but decided he wanted to be in aviation. But he had college loans. So he and his wife, Sandy, who is down here videotaping this, uh, decided that they were going to work together, cut back on their expenses. Uh, I'm hitting the chair. Cut back on their expenses, and they were going to pay off their college loans which they did, and they, were, they wanted then to do they that started. before they started spending money on flying. So they worked, cut back their expenses, lived, lived on what kind of food? A lot of canned chicken. A lot of canned chicken, okay. Uh, and, and, and held their expenses back, paid off uh, their college loans, and then started spending money on flying. And uh, he's now working on his flight instructor certificate. We hope to make a, a difference in that. So Alan won the scholarship to help him get his initial CFI. And, uh, and, and, and that scholarship, can we back up on the slide? The scholarship was, we think, worth $18,000. A lot of people might argue with that. What it is is $5,000 cash and lifetime access to every King Schools course. Uh, and, and, and if you pencil it out, it comes out to $18,000. Plus, lifetime access to every King Schools FERC. Yeah, which is the Flight Instructor Refresher course, uh, which is an important part in their lives. Uh, and so uh, he, he's going to have to put up with us for a long time. Um, <laughs> But I'll have to tell you, uh, the biggest benefit to giving these scholarships are the caliber of people that we meet. They are people that I respect and admire and want to be friends with for a long time, and they make good, long-term friends. So, Bob, before we uh, pass the mic to Alan, would you introduce your board member that joined us? Absolutely. This is Dr. Victor Vogel. He's uh, recently been named to the uh, board of uh, the National Association of Flight Instructors. We're really happy to have him here. He is a, uh, a, flight, a double I and a uh, Cirrus uh, pilot and owns a, owns a nice Cirrus. And he's, contribu he's helping, based on his professional career as a teaching physician, um, is helping us in our developing our professional development courses at uh, NAFI and helping helping us do better at what we do. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Good to be here. Congratulations, Alan. I'm Thank thrilled that it's you. Thank you so much. Bob, can you get a hand over here and Victor? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's, let's do one more time and make it a, 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 a good photo opportunity. Come, come back over here, Alan. And Bob, can, right. can you guys shake hands? And, sure. 
How are we going to do that? Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> and, and Martha, let's, like let's, let's, let's pause for a little bit. All right, thank you. I, I just want to thank uh, John and Martha. Um, first of all, I've never I've never been one for public speaking, so if you're going to throw tomatoes, I just have to take them out of the can first. Now, now's your chance. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but I just want to thank John and Martha, and also the NAFI crew. Um, the resources you guys have uh, make this possible. And then my wife, obviously, this I could not do this without my wife. Period. And uh, the mentors I have, and uh, you guys don't know it, but you guys have been mentors of mine, and. Uh, you guys will be mentors of mine in the future, and I'm very excited about this. So thank you very, very much. Well, don't wow. forget, you get to mentor people starting right this second. <laughs> <laughs> and again. It's already started just by, by that acknowledgement, just so you know. That's, that's how it works in, a, so, in so aviation. Bob, I'm going to put you on the spot. You always do. <laughs> do you have any specific advice at this point in Alan's aviation progress as he's just about to become a flight instructor. Oh, what a tough, that's, that's <laughs> what a, dirty. That, 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 what a, you should have warned me about that the other yeah, night. That is I, I, I would, no, seriously, I would say from the outset, from the outset, you're going to run into pilots that know more than you. You'll run into pilots that know less than you. Always maintain your professionalism. Always maintain your humility. Always remember your students come first. Take care of them. And everything, every good thing in the world will follow from that. What do you think of that, Victor? Pretty good job, Bob. Pretty good. Pretty good. We, we, have a, we have a rule in medical education that you don't really know it until you can teach it. Correct. Yeah. And so I would encourage you as you're learning, you can practice teaching and it will not only help your students, but it will help your understanding and your knowledge. Absolutely. Well, well said. And I would add one more uh, thought, and that is, as a CFI, your job is to teach your students what they need to know, not everything that you know about a topic. Yep. Necessary, Tim. You nervous about it? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'd be uh, I'd be lying if I wasn't. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of responsibility, that's for sure. I'll tell you what. If I ever meet an instructor who doesn't pace up and down or slightly nervous when they solo student, I don't care how many students they've soloed, I'm worried about the instructor. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're a little nervous about taking care of them, it means you care and you're doing your job. Barry, right. you're in charge. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Alan. Thank you for being great, here. Great to have you part of the community of scholarship winners because Alan is our most recent scholarship winner, but there, there have been others that have come before him. And, and I know that he will live up to their legacy, which is a big, big set of shoes to fill. Um, each one of our winners that we've had of this scholarship have gone on to accomplish their goals and are active members of the aviation community and are doing good things for aviation. I know you will too, Alan. Thank you so much. This is a picture of us together with uh, Alan uh, when we arrived on Wednesday evening together with the NAFI folks. Okay, so I just, I'd like to just keep this part a little bit short, but give you all a little bit of a view into what you may see in press conferences in the future. And looking to the future, we're obviously looking at a post-COVID world, and one in which the hiring demand for pilots is going to increase dramatically once again, most likely to levels that have never been seen before. And so King Schools is looking at that and figuring out how we can ensure that we're part of creating a good pipeline of pilots that are flowing through to the airlines and to professional careers. Uh, our professional pilot courses are part of that, but a bigger part of it is really in creating good relationships with the organizations that are going to train many of those pilots. And, and that includes uh, both flight schools and colleges and universities. And just like we, we promoted Kim 
to run our professional pilot organization, we do have another woman, Pamela Olson, who is running our colleges and universities program. And I, I'm not at liberty to, to name all of those uh, organizations right now because we, we don't necessarily have their permission to state who they are, but I can tell you that this is a growing and a rapidly growing part of King School's business because what we're seeing is that many more colleges and universities are putting together programs to put pilots all the way through and get them a college degree in the process. So King Schools is going to be working on that. You're going to see coming out and being promoted even more a new King School study method to ensure a high score on your written exam. And that will include our what we have always done, which is make sure we teach the material first and we prepare the customer for their test second. Um, the preparing their knowledge is never going to go away. It's core and fundamental to King Schools and what we do. An area that we're going to work on is doing an even better job at preparing people to get a high score on their test. It's more important than ever that, that our customers get a high score. And our, our average score tends to already be in the 90s. But our students want to do even better. They want to get in ni the high 90s, 98 and so on. And we have a, a methodology that we're developing to ensure that they get there. And we have additional tools that we're building to ensure that they get there. The biggest tool is a new flashcard app, which we'll be debuting in the next month to two months, where uh, customers, just before they go take their written test, the last thing that they'll do is go through this flashcard application and very quickly go through the knowledge and make sure that they have each element of the knowledge that they need to do well on the test by flipping through cards in a flashcard kind of format. So look for that. Um, another thing along those lines, as more and more people are moving to the airlines, there's a big gap between what you need to know as a general aviation pilot, even a corporate professional pilot, and when you move to a Part 121 airline, there's things that like pushback and, and about how you coordinate with dispatch, how you, how you act as an airline pilot within a Part 121 organization. And we're going to have a course for that. We're, it's in production right now, and it'll be just a couple months out from being released. And it's being done by somebody who has a lot of experience in that area. We brought in somebody, a subject matter expert, who knows exactly what needs to be done. He's an a, um, airline pilot. He's a trainer for the airlines. And he's going to give a great perspective for people that are just making that jump to the airlines so that when they show up, they know the language, they know the terminology, they know what's expected of them. So that course is coming up. Uh, with King Schools, we're putting an emphasis on growing our professional courses, our colleges and universities, as well as continuing to develop our, our core uh, content. So big thing for us is when you've got 90 courses, it's a lot of work to keep them up to date, and which we do religiously at King Schools. It's, a, it's another chunk of work to keep updating them with new HD video and, and new ways, new teaching techniques and so on. And we're working on that as well. We've been building and hiring in our course creation department in order to accelerate the update of all of those courses. So, so those are the, the main things when you look to King School's future, uh, what you might expect to see from us. And John Dowd apparently knows, knows something that I've forgotten and he's gonna tell me right now. So, so John wants me to do something that I'm not terribly comfortable in doing, um, and, and that's talk about myself. And w one of the things about the King School's future, when we talk about accelerating our course content creation, John and Martha can only do so much in the studio. And as we build our studio, as we have been doing, so that it's capable of doing more, we need to bring on some new on-screen instructors to supplement uh, what John and Martha are doing. And somehow, I got elected for that. And how you got elected to that. Oh. Barry is really, really a good instructor, and uh, really, really good on video, and, uh, and has a, a wonderful demeanor, and it comes across. He, he, he makes it, our, our role at King Schools is to take relatively complicated material, clarify it, simplify it, and make it fun. And Barry does that very, very well. And uh, uh, he's, uh, it's just gonna be, it, it, Martha's getting old. And, uh, 
I beg your pardon. <laughs> yeah, you are getting old. You really are. And, but and you aren't going to get any older if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's true. <laughs> so uh, we're not going to be able to uh, keep up this rate forever, and the future of King Schools can't be dependent on a couple 70-year-olds. And so uh, what we're doing is grooming Barry to do video, and he does a really, really great job of it. Well, it, it, thank you, John. It's, it's something that I enjoy doing. It's something that I have a passion for. And once again, another area where I have the best mentors that you can possibly have to learn about how to present material on camera. So John and Martha have been uh, wonderful to work with and, uh, and with their coaching, I'm hoping that the video that we're producing with me as the instructor uh, will be educational and will meet that goal of taking relatively complex material, clarifying, simplifying, and making it, making it actually making it fun to receive. I've been working on the, the fundamental of flight instruction, uh, the fundamentals of flight instruction test uh, course that we have. And boy, I'll tell you what, if you can make that material simple <laughs> and fun, boy, I, then, then I, I don't have any worry about the future. And, and we've been trying to do that. You'll, you'll be the judge, those of you who end up taking that course. So with that, I'm going to go to questions. So if you have any arguments with uh, anything that I've said, you can direct those to John and Martha. Thank you. <laughs> and any questions? Anybody want to argue with Barry? Well, I don't Barry, get it. Everybody else does. In the future, if you get to thinking that we're uh, talking too much about you, what you say, should say is, enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think of me? <laughs> That's great. We, we do have a question. Go ahead. Well, that, that's a good question. So the question is, uh, what do I think the future is of more of the ma and pa flight schools relative to the college and universities and the role that they're starting to play in, in grooming pilots, especially that have a professional career? And, and I would say that the future is very bright for those organizations and for a couple of reasons. One is there's still very much the ability to do what they've always done and train GA pilots. But the other one is there's opportunities to partner with colleges and universities in order to provide the flight training that goes along with a college program in prepping students. And there's more and more of those opportunities with uh, Liberty University and, and other local uh, colleges and universities that you may be able to partner with in order to put together a program that is able to produce professional pilots where there will be so much demand in the years to come. So that might be something that, that a smaller flight school may be able to appear as a much bigger flight school by partnering with educational ed institutions. Um, let me add something to that. One of the things that, um, that we have found out talking to a lot of flight schools around during this last year is that a lot of them have had a big influx in students and you would say, oh, yeah, that's all people headed for the airlines. But a, a significant number of the mom and pop flight schools and even some of the bigger ones that we've talked to say, no, these are people that because they were working from home and they didn't have an hour commute each way chewing up their day, had both the time and uh, now and the money to satisfy their drive to learn to fly. And these, a, a whole bunch of these new students were not career-oriented people headed for the airlines. They were people of various ages, but particularly 30, 40, 50s, who had wanted to fly all their life, and now they had the time to do it because of the work from home arrangements and, and layoffs and so on. And, and we're taking advantage of it. So they were getting lots of non-career pilots in, along with, in some cases, a fair amount of uh, career-oriented pilots. But I think that's a very healthy sign. And the mom and pop operations are really the right place for people to go who just want to fly for fun. Because a career academy that says, hey, I'm going to get you out of here in nine months or a year and, and uh, have you, you know, working with a regional or somebody like that, they're effective, 
They accomplish the goal for a career-oriented person, but they're not necessarily the track that a pilot who wants to be in the community because aviation is their, their, their fantasy, their desire, they've wanted to do it for years and years and years, like Alan, um, are thinking about. So, so they're still going to, to really like the, the atmosphere, the community at those smaller schools. Sorry to bounce in there, Barry. That, that was great, Martha, thank you. Okay. Uh, question over here. Okay, so the, the question is, we currently have an, an Apple app which allows you to uh, connect to our servers and download your educational content and take it while offline on your Apple iPhone, iPad, and so on. And the question is, are we going to do that for Android? And, and the answer is yes. In fact, the uh, flashcard application that I was speaking about earlier will come out on both the uh, Apple iPhone and, and Android devices uh, initially. We've, we've developed a whole new infrastructure which allows us to develop those two platforms simultaneously. So the next step after that will be to take our other companion app and pull out the current uh, interface that's underneath it and replace it with this same technology, and that will get us to Android. I can't say exactly when that's going to happen, but I can tell you that it is a direction for King Schools. We've got people writing code for it right now, isn't that correct? We do. We, we have uh, at least three software developers that are currently working on that, uh, that application. Okay. But it's a complicated, uh, complicated application, and they want to make sure they don't break something when they uh, change that. Absolutely. What a uh, we, we have time for one more question, and uh, then they're going to kick us out of here, and, and it could get really ugly. So let's, let's take the one more question. So, so the question is, currently most of our professional courses are done as, uh, as a combination of textual material together with images and, and some animations. They are not uh, video courses, as is kind of the, the core set of King courses uh, for general aviation. So th there were a couple reasons to do that. One was to allow professional pilots who, um, who need to get through the information really quickly. Most people can read faster than they can watch a video. And so some part of it was being respectful of their time. Part of it is also that it was, it was easier to develop the application uh, or develop the content and, and be able to get out more courses quicker and establish our professional pilot market. Um, but uh, I think that it, it's going to be up to Kim. And you may want to contact her at King Schools. Um, and uh, you can just call King Schools and ask to be transferred or, or for her address. But uh, she is taking a look at the overall professional market and figuring out the best way to address the market, including changes to the way we're doing things now as needed in order to make sure that we're taking care of the needs of professional pilots. So that's great feedback, and, and uh, I will pass that along to her. But uh, if you have feedback like that, please contact him. Okay. Well, I, I would like to add one more thing to, Barry is exactly right on what he says. Uh, but I'd like to add a little bit more on the origin of this. Our professional pilot courses started with the RVSM course, Reduced Vertical Separation Minimums, in 2005. And at the time, our primary um, goal, as Barry says, was for professional pilots to be able to get through it quickly. And we wanted to have something that they could use when they were uh, out at an FBO somewhere waiting for passengers to show up or, or whatever they might be waiting for. And at that time, um, the bandwidth just wasn't there uh, and the uh, 
internet access at most FBOs in 2005, 15 years ago, was not there for us to be able to stream video to them and have them get through their programs. And we wanted them to be able to just, you know, mark it off fast at an FBO and, and move on. And so bandwidth is how, width is how it started. And, but uh, obviously technology has changed and the bandwidth is there now almost everywhere. And that's why we're taking another look at it. And that's a very good comment. Yeah. And not only is the bandwidth there, but we now have applications like uh, the iOS applications that allow you to download videos and then view them later, even if you're offline. So that, that will apply to any videos that we do in the uh, professional pilot series as well. Okay, well, I think we're, we're about to get kicked out of here. So in staying ahead of the sheriff, I would say uh, we need to cut it off here and, and run for the hills. But uh, we appreciate so much all of you showing up and, and sticking with us, hearing a little bit about where things are now and where they're going for King Schools. Thank you so much for your time.